Hi guys, Olive here, here today to tell you about some of the books I read when I was a teenager. I've mentioned this a few times before here on this channel, but I did a lot of reading when I was a child. It was one of my all-time favorite things to do. But then I more or less fell out of the habit when I was in late high school and then into college because I was doing so much reading for school and I was just so busy with school, with extracurricular activities. I worked through both high school and college. Reading was still a big part of my life when I was a younger teenager and I still still did do some reading for pleasure when I was an older teenager. It was mainly just during my summer breaks. And at that time in my life, I was reading pretty much exclusively young adult fiction when that genre as a concept was beginning to come into its own, not unlike its audience. I was reading books that were published anywhere from the late 90s to the mid 2000s. And around that time, I began to transition out of the genre. Or really, I shouldn't call it a transition because there was one definitive moment where I made the switch from young adult books to adult books, which I will talk about later in this video. But I read a lot of books from that era. I read a lot of the really well-known ones, and I also read some of the obscure ones. I have done a deep dive into my own memory to be able to come up with this list. When I first got started on Goodreads, I made the decision to not include the majority of books I read as a child and a teenager, because Goodreads likes to recommend you books based on books you've read previously, and I didn't want to be recommended books like those because I was more or less done reading those styles of books, and also I just kind of wanted a clean slate as an adult reader. But that means that I don't have a record of the books that I read when I was a child or a teenager, which is kind of sad. It also makes me just a little bit jealous of people who grow up with Goodreads and have a record of everything they've read, but it is what it is. I have gone through my memory banks and selected the highlights to talk about with you today. So first and foremost is a series of books that was probably one of my favorite series when I was a teenager. It is the Georgia Nicholson series by Louise Renison, which includes titles such as Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging, and on the bright side, I'm now the girlfriend of a sex god, in addition to some other saucy titles. I remember this being a very funny, very silly series, although when I was looking at some more modern reviews on Goodreads, it seems that some of the content within these books has not aged particularly well, considering the main character is a judgmental teenage girl. That does not surprise me. The next series I'm fairly certain I read the whole way through is the Janie Johnson series by Caroline B. Cooney. This series started with the book The Face on the Milk Carton, in which the main character, Janie Johnson, saw a picture of herself as a child on a milk carton where they would typically feature pictures of missing children or just missing people. Fun fact. I never knew that they did that until I read this book. Our milk cartons never featured such pictures. But the rest of the series follows Janie as she slowly starts to piece together what actually happened to her when she was a child, and then we also see how it affects her life going forward. This was the first mystery slash thriller, if you want to call it that, series that I read when I was a teenager. I do remember I dipped into some V.C. Andrews, but I can't remember which books I read, so they're not on this list. Most of what I read during those years, though, was realistic fiction surrounding teenagers, particularly teenage girls. So I read The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Anne Brashears, which was, to say the least, a very popular book during that period of time and for girls of my age. This book is all about four girls, four friends, who share a magical pair of blue jeans. They had discovered completely by accident that these jeans fit them all perfectly, even though they are drastically different sizes. We follow the girls over one summer, at least in this first book, and our focus in the book is on whichever girl has the jeans at the time. All four of the girls are having very different summers from one another. They're all separated from one another. So when one of the girls has the pair of jeans, she's writing about her adventures before she sends on the jeans to another person within the friend group. I've only read the first book in this series and I read it right before the movie was announced. And it was kind of baby's first hipster aerial moment because after I saw that there was going to be a movie, I knew how much more popular this series was going to get. And so I just kind of stopped reading the books and I didn't go see the movie. And I'm kind of regretting it because I really loved this first book. I probably would have loved the other books in the series and I probably would have really enjoyed the movie. Maybe I should finally watch that movie now that I'm 30. <laughs> but I wasn't only interested in reading books about teenage girls during this period of time because another series that I was so fascinated by was a series of books called The Black Book 
Diary of a Teenage Stud by Jonah Black. The first two books in the series were Girls, 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 and Stop, Don't Stop. I, to this day, still don't know for certain whether or not these books were fiction, nonfiction, maybe somewhere in between, because the main character of these books is also named Jonah. The story of these books is that Jonah got kicked out of boarding school where he was attending while he was living with his dad in Pennsylvania. He has to return back home to Florida to live with his mom and sister, and he has to repeat the 11th grade. So all of his old school friends before he moved to Pennsylvania are now seniors and he is a year behind. These books follow him in his daily life. He talks about that in his diary. He talks about the fact that he's in love with his best friend. And there's also a lingering mystery about what caused him to get kicked out of boarding school back in Pennsylvania. I didn't have many guy friends when I was between 13 and 15 years old when I was reading these books. So for me, it was really fascinating to be in the head of a teenage guy. I remember being very dedicated to finish out this series of four books. It was only four books, but it was not the most popular series, so my library didn't have an abundance of copies, so I actually had to use interlibrary loan to get the last two books in this series. I didn't do that for any other series. But even after I finished the four books in that series, the desire to read those diary format style of books remained very strong, and it prompted me to pick up a lot of the books edited by Beatrice Sparks, like Annie's Baby and It Happened to Nancy. I know Go Ask Alice is another one that she edited. These are just the two that I remember the most. Whether or not these books were actually the stories of real teenagers, I still don't know. If you do know, let me know in the comment section below. But they were at least marketed as books that told the stories of teenagers going through something really hard. I remember reading as many of these as I could get my hands on when I was a teenager. And I think it's really interesting looking back now at the reading I was doing as a teenager and seeing that there are kernels of who I would eventually become, kernels of the reader I would eventually become hidden in my teenage reading because obviously I was interested in memoir. Even way back then, I was interested in reading about people's lives, about their struggles, and hearing from them directly. I was a memoir reader before I even knew it. Also, looking back at this time in my life, I can start to see that toward the mid-2000s, I was very ready to graduate in every sense of that term. I was ready to be done with high school and move on to college. I wanted to be independent. And I also wanted to start reading about some people who were older than me, some people who were college age or even older, people who were living the life that I was aspiring to. So when I was reading the Courtney Von Dragon Smith series by Katherine Clark, I remember that I liked the second book, Worst Case Scenario, the best, because the main character goes off to college in it. I also very clearly remember that the college she goes to is called Corwall Falls College, AKA CFC. At one point in the book, I think it's during a sports game or a pep rally or something like that, there are cheerleaders who were yelling, CFC, CFC, and the main character finds this so ironic because chlorofluorocarbons, things that deplete the ozone layer, are also known as CFCs. And it sounds like these cheerleaders were promoting them. I still think that is such a hilarious joke. It has 15 years worth of staying power. I still remember it. When I was a teenager, I also read the Princess Diary series by Meg Cabot, and I actually had the reverse situation from what I had with The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, because I saw the Princess Diaries movie first and then went back to read the books. And when I did end up picking up the books, I was so pleasantly surprised by them. They were so much more gritty and more real, it felt like. But I remember there was one day at the library and either they didn't have the next one in the series that had just been released, or I had already finished all the ones that were currently released. I can't remember which one of those things it was, but I didn't have a new Princess Diaries book is the moral of that story. And I was feeling really sad about it. Off of that disappointment, I started doing what I felt was the logical thing. I started looking for other books by Meg Cabot that I could check out instead. I was just not aware that she wrote books not directed at teenagers. So I was doing my little library card catalog thing and I found another book by Meg Cabot that was available that I could check out. It was called The Boy Next Door 
when I checked it out, I was not aware that this was a romance chick litty book directed at adults. I could tell right away when I started reading it that there was something different about it. I could tell that the tone was different, but I really liked that. It was an epistolary novel told entirely in emails, which seemed so grown up to me. The main character had her own apartment. She had her own career. She had a dating life. It was everything that I was yearning to be. So at that point, at age 16, it must have been, I decided I want to move to adult books. It's a little bit early for that move, but I grew up quickly. It was around this time, though, that I stopped doing so much reading for pleasure. I was getting busier. I met the man who would become my husband at age 17. That took up a lot of my time and attention. I started applying to college. I was working. So I didn't do as much reading for pleasure, but I do remember reading the Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold when I was maybe 18, maybe 17 or 18. I know for a fact I read this one during high school though because I remember I read it during musical practice. I had a pretty substantial role in the spring musical my senior year, but my role was only at the beginning of the play and the end of the play, but I still had to come to every practice. So there were some practices I didn't have to be doing anything at all. I just had to be present. So I remember being out in the seated area, just kind of picking a seat at random, putting all my school stuff on the chairs next to me and curling up with my book and just reading huge chunks at a time. I will always remember that. So those were the books that I read when I was a teenager, or at least those were the books I read for pleasure when I was a teenager. I was also doing doing reading for school, required reading, but I've already done a video on that, which I will link for you in case you're interested. If you've read any of these books, either as a teenager or an adult, I would love to hear from you. You can let me know that or any other more general comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below. But if you prefer to find me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.